So imagine you're a game designer tasked with designing a specific feature or a system for a game. That involves you coming up with the rules of how that feature should work to achieve its intended player experience within the game. And to implement this feature in the game, you need engineers to create the tools and systems and artists to create the assets and the visual elements needed. But that can't happen till you properly communicated the design of that feature to them as well as what you need from them. And for years, the industry standard way of doing that has been through game design documents. Now it's important that I mention that not every game needs a game design document to be developed. How a game's design is communicated depends on your team and the kind of game you're working on. Use whatever floats your boat. Heck, make TikToks and share it with your team if that's what works for you guys. But in most professional game studios, designs are documented and communicated using game design docs, mostly in the form of custom wikis as I mentioned in the last video. This is why knowing how to write good game design documents is essential for a game designer, especially if your goal is to work in established game studios. But while you'll find a ton of GDD templates that give you a format and overview, very few actually show how to fill the meat of these GDDs. And I get it. How you write your GDDs is a personal decision based on you, your team, and the kind of game that you're working on. GDDs for a massive AAA studio will vary considerably to a GDD for a small five-person indie studio or solo game. So there's no one-size-fits-all GDD writing style. Your GDD, your choice. But seeing another game designer's documentation process can help immensely in shaping your own, especially if you're just starting out. So in this video, I'll be taking you through my process of writing game design documents, which is very similar to what I use here at Dreamlit Games working on Towers of Agaspa. While I can't show you the actual design docs that we use for the game, I'll instead be designing a gun weapon system for an imaginary FPS game. Just a super basic FPS game with common gun mechanics, nothing special. This is because guns are incredibly common in video games, just like in good old America. So I figured this would be familiar enough for you to understand and adapt into your own GTDs. So while you could consider this a tutorial on how to write a good game design document, you should use this more as a guide to shape and mold your own style and process of making design docs. But before I start, I'll need a general game idea that I'll be designing this gun system for. The type of game that you're designing for would naturally have a heavy influence on the decisions and rules that you'll be making. So I put up a poll on Instagram asking my followers to vote between a Call of Duty style game and a Doom Eternal style game. The oversimplified generalization that I was making was that the Call of Duty style game would have a more tactical playstyle with realistic guns, whereas a Doom Eternal style game would have a more fast-paced playstyle with more fictional weaponry. The way I designed the behavior and specs of my gun system will vary to cater to each style of game. And from a total of 130 votes, Call of Duty end up winning with 61%. So that's what we are going with. Thank you for everyone who voted. And if you want to help contribute on future decisions that I might be making for my videos, feel free to follow me on Instagram. So with the general game type decided on, it's time to get into it. I usually break down my GDD process into three parts. Research, documentation, and iteration. Starting with part one research. So how should your system work? The whole research phase of your design process revolves around figuring that out for yourself first before you can even think about sharing it with your team. I like to use a whiteboard tool for this because it helps me visualize and brainstorm better. And it's also easier to share and collaborate on if required. I'll be using Miro for this, which is the industry standard and also what we use at Dreamlit. There's also Draw.io and LucidSpark as alternatives. I also break down my research phase into three parts. Defining the experience, collecting references, and planning the design. The first thing we need to do is define the experience. Specifically, what is the experience that this system or feature intends to provide to the player in the context of the entire game's experience? Doing this first will give you a goal that every decision for your feature should strive to achieve. This could be about defining what your player should play, think, feel, and experience while engaging with this feature. Like how Ghost of Tsushima wanted players to experience quick, realistic samurai combat. Or Spider-Man famously intends to make you feel like, well, Spider-Man. And the decisions they made were to achieve that intended experience. For me, since the vote decided on a Call of Duty style game, that means the experience should be more of a tactical realistic shooter. And for the fun of it, I also want players to be able to shape and modify their playstyle. So the intended experience for the guns in the game that I want is easy to use, difficult to master, a wide range of base weapon types, modular setups to allow for gun modifications, 
I also want to focus on fun over realism and hope to stick to the scope of an indie project with limited time and budget. Because trust me, not everyone has that Activision Blizzard money. What I like to do next is to find references that provide the same or similar experience that I intend for my feature. This can be anything from existing games, movies, YouTube videos, Wikipedia pages. Wikipedia? Whatever you can use to get more information on the kind of experience you want to provide. I like to categorize my references into design references technical references and visual references. Design references provide knowledge about the systems or features you are designing so that you can convert them into gameplay elements. Technical references are for gaining knowledge on how your system would actually be implemented in your game since you are writing your documentation for an engineer to read and bring to life. And finally, Visual references are for how the system's behavior should look. For a designer, that would most specifically be the visual feedback that the player receives from using that system. So I collected information on the gun stats and attachments for the design references, sample Unreal Engine projects and YouTube tutorials for technical references, and looked at videos of firing guns in games and in real life for visual references. Depending on the feature that you're designing, you could actually try experiencing it in real life to genuinely know how it feels. For instance, with my gun system, You know what, never mind. With all the references collected, we can move on to the final part of the research phase, planning your design. Here's why you take the elements that you want from your references and convert them into actual game mechanics, systems, levels, or content that you want for your feature. It's here that you actually start showing your chops as a game designer and start making the rules and decisions for your feature, along with why you're making these decisions. If you're working with a team, I'd highly recommend making this a collaborative experience with other designers, engineers, and artists. Engineers and artists can provide the technical know-how that you need to narrow down your decisions while the other designers can help refine and sanity check your decisions and ensure they provide the intended experience and are still fun. How you go about it is completely up to you. But a tried and tested rule for designing game systems is to break it down. I like breaking down every system I design into different subsystems that contribute to the main system. I then break those down into the game mechanics that come under it, along with the corresponding rules of that mechanic as well as the different levers I would want control over as a designer to modify. For my gun system, it can be broken down into subsystems like gun types, gun combat systems, and the attachment system. The gun combat system can have game mechanics like shooting, aiming, and reloading. Then a game mechanic like shooting needs to have a set of rules to define how it should work like when the bullet should be fired, whether the bullet should be a hit scan or projectile, bullet drop off, recoil, the difference in behavior between each gun type etc. And finally the levers for that mechanic. For my shooting mechanic that can be things like damage per bullet, recoil, range, firing rate, ammo, my crippling anxiety. I wish. Then we repeat for every game mechanic in that system. Yep. In the end, my whiteboard looks something like this from just the shooting mechanic. I'll spare you the ordeal of seeing me do the same for every other aspect of my system. But regardless of how much you fleshed out in your whiteboard, all of this is just for you, not your team. When looking at your whiteboard, you know what it means, but it wouldn't really make sense for anyone else looking at it. You need to translate everything that you came up with in your research phase and communicate it to your team in a way that they will easily understand. Which takes us to part two of my GDD process. Documentation. We made it. This is why you get into the nitty gritty of actually writing your game design doc. I know, right? About time. Your focus should be to ensure that all the design decisions that you made in your research phase can be communicated in a way that anyone working on this feature can read and easily understand. You can use whatever tool you want to write your design doc. Like I mentioned in the previous video, modern game studios use custom wikis for their GDDs. I'll be using Notion for my example as well. You guys can sign up for Notion for free using my affiliate link down in the description. In the end, use whatever works best for you. But being a good writer and writing a good game design doc are two completely different things. This isn't creative writing, it's technical writing. So instead, you should prioritize your docs to be one, comprehensive, which means being thorough and extensive in the information provided. And two, easy to read. People reading your doc should be able to easily find and grasp the information provided. Apart from that, how you write your design doc is entirely up to you. Every game designer has their own style of writing design docs. Even within Dreamlet, I'm one of four game designers and all of us have our own ways of writing game design docs while ensuring that it's comprehensive and easy to read. We do however try to stick to a fixed template for our design docs just to 
to ensure that there's some kind of consistency. For us, we break every page of the design doc into design overview, where we give a brief explanation of what feature this page is about. System details, where we go into the details about the system of feature design. This is the real meat of your doc. And implementation summary, where we explain how the system has been implemented in the game based on the design. To achieve what I consider a good design doc, I loosely follow a set of rules in every doc I write. Rule number one being highlight the intended experience. I start every design doc by highlighting why we need this feature and how we intend it to work. I add this to every page's design overview so that other devs can also understand the role of this feature in achieving the intended experience for the game and why this feature is designed in specific ways. Rule two, avoid long paragraphs and walls of text. There is no bigger turn off to getting your team to read your doc if they just go to the page and they see something that looks like Microsoft's terms and conditions. Seeing a massive wall of text is automatically going to make people glaze over everything that you've written. You're not trying to hide your deepest, darkest secrets from your team. You want information to be easy to find and understand. So avoid a paragraph having more than a handful of lines if possible. This can be a problem when you're trying to be comprehensive and design large features. But a way to get around it is by using rule number three, break down your features into subsections. Remember how I broke down my gun system into different subsystems like gun types, gun combats, and attachments. Each of these sections would contain the relevant game mechanics with their corresponding rules and required levers. I sometimes make every game mechanic within a subsystem its own page based on how extensive I want it to be. With modern GDDs that use custom wikis, each section and subsection would be its own page parented within each other too. This makes a massive system a lot easier to digest and share as well. If I wanted to share only the reloading mechanic with a teammate, for instance, I would be able to link just the page discussing the reloading mechanic rather than expecting them to scroll to a specific part of a long document. Also seeing a shorter page makes people less apprehensive about actually going through your doc. We've all received those long text messages and instantly been like, hell no, I'm not gonna read all of that. In the spirit of making things easier to read is rule number four. Use bullet points, tables, and lists as often as possible. Hands down, the best way to avoid long paragraphs is to represent the same information using tables or bullet points. If I wanted to explain the rules of my shooting mechanic, rather than making it a paragraph, it would make most sense to break it into a list of bulleted points. Or the levers can be represented as a table to highlight the important variables better. But hey, sometimes your design is just too complicated that words just aren't enough or sometimes people just don't want to read it happens it's 2023 in that case we turn to rule number five use visuals whenever possible something that needs 10 lines of text to describe can sometimes be explained with just a single image for instance flowcharts are awesome for presenting the behavior flow of mechanics rather than reading my shooting behavior points it's a lot quicker to understand from looking at this flowchart Making basic diagrams or sharing GIFs, videos of prototypes or references are also great to get your point across. Heck, maybe you've organized your designs on your whiteboard well enough that you can link it in your doc for others to reference if needed. I personally wouldn't replace my writing entirely with visuals, but would instead complement my writing with my visuals. After reading my doc, the visuals can help reinforce their understanding of the information that I've provided. So those are my general tips for writing what I consider is a good design doc. This, however, is not going to ensure that your design decisions aren't crap. Full disclosure, all the design decisions I made for this gun system are probably crap. It's just going to make it easier for everyone reading your doc to fully understand what you intended. But here's the thing, nothing in game dev ever works as intended. Things are always changing with new challenges and hurdles popping up when you least expect it. And a lot of times this results in you needing to change or update your designs. It's for moments like these that we turn to part three of my GDD process iteration. That's the reason why game design docs are called live documents. Just because you've documented your designs does not mean that it is set in stone and there is no way to go about changing things. As you delve further into the game's development and as you playtest your game more, you're going to realize that your initial design isn't enough. Maybe you need a new mechanic to your system to achieve your intended experience. Maybe you need to remove a mechanic because of scope. Maybe there are technical or artistic limitations that don't work with your design. Maybe it's just not fun. 
The fact is, things will change. It's a matter of when, not if. And in times like that, you need to go back to the drawing board and update your design. If you're lucky, maybe it's just minor tweaks and changes to your existing design. But in the worst case scenario, you'd have to completely redesign this feature from scratch. And in the process, you need to update your documentation to reflect these changes. Outdated documentation is risky because if your implementation in the game and your design doc don't match, it's bound to result in mistakes and confusion down the line. Games take years to develop for the most part, and we depend on these documentations to be the single source of truth. So as a game designer, you need to be constantly updating your design docs and iterating it throughout the development of the game, and yeah, that's not gonna happen. No, that's not happening. I'll be real with you all, keeping your design docs updated all the time is a pain. That's just so much to do all the time when making a game that sometimes it's just not worth the effort. Even the biggest game studios with unlimited time and budget need to pick and choose their battles because making a game is a lot of work. So personally, I've only resorted to updating documentations when it's absolutely necessary and in most cases just leave a note in the documentation saying that it's outdated. In a lot of cases though, a feature might have had minor tweaks and updates throughout the development of the game and may even be in a solid enough state in the game where it wouldn't make sense to sync the time and effort needed to make those updates to the documentation. So when it comes to updating your documentation, do it only when you can or absolutely have to. It's important, yes, but there's always more important stuff to do. So that's my three-part process to writing game design documents. You research how you want your feature to work to achieve your intended experience and make design decisions based on your findings. You document your design decisions to communicate them to your team in a way that's comprehensive and easy to read. You iterate on your documentation to keep it updated with your game's development as much as possible. But I'll stress on this again, you don't have to write design docs for your game unless you decide that it is the best way to communicate with your team. Use whatever works best for you, your team, and the kind of game you're working on. But writing game design docs is the industry standard. And if you're looking to join an established game studio, hopefully these tips can help you mold and shape your own style of writing design docs. If you do things differently or there are more tips that you can share about writing game design docs, I would love for you guys to share it down in the comments below. And if you like what you saw or you learned something new from this video, a like, share and subscribe goes a long way towards supporting me. My Notion affiliate link is also down in the description for anyone interested in a free and really powerful custom wiki tool. Otherwise, that's been it. This is Sai and until next time, sayonara. Yeah.